when I was getting ready to introduce him as a presidential candidate, I thought to myself, 25 years ago, would I have imagined that this would be possible? And the answer is yes, <laughs> absolutely. You don't miss Corey in a room, he kind of lights it up. And he was always like that. And he kind of swept through the door. You kind of feel the atmosphere change. I got my BA from Stanford, but my PhD on the streets of Newark. We have made a statement that will reverberate around this nation. Everybody knew who Cory Booker was. Saving abandoned dogs and rescuing his neighbor from her burning home. I think Cory Booker often sounds like a Hallmark card. If he's basing his campaign on Iowa, he's nowhere close to the leaders at this point. We will make justice real for all people. And that is why. I am running for President of the United States of America. My dream was uh, to, to play college ball. I joke to people all the time is that, you know, I got into Stanford because of a 4.0 in 1600, 4.0 yards per carry, 1600 receiving yards. You know, I knew back then that football was gonna be an extraordinary ticket, but not my destination. He likes to send around, you know, his highlight clips when they occasionally get posted uh, on the internet from time to time. He was remarkably slow uh, as a uh, tight end. It was like fake pass, that's the tight end, Corey Booker, nice move into the open field and he's inside. And in those first two years, I kept working hard on the field, but I said, you know what? Um, I'm going to kill this academic thing. Corey seemed to do with his Stanford time what five of us did with our Stanford time. I mean, he was kind of everywhere. Now that made it difficult with my coaches with realizing, wait a minute, this guy is working at a suicide crisis hotline until late in the night, you know, and he's got practice the next morning. This guy is the president of his class. I still remember being yelled at, Mr. President, get your blank back in the huddle. He just had that tireless energy and this ability to see um, issues with a maturity that I think a lot of us didn't have. Cory Booker was born in Washington, D.C., but he grew up in Harrington Park, New Jersey. It's an affluent suburb. Booker's parents really integrated this community as the first black couple to move into Harrington Park. I grew up in a house I grew up in, in a suburban area, because my family were denied housing because of the color of their skin. And you know, it was a white couple that posed as them to buy the house we grew up in. His dad liked to joke that they were four raisins in a tub of vanilla ice cream. I am where I am today because a whole bunch of folks fought for my family's housing rights. The first thing I did uh, getting out of fellowship out of law school was to fight, fight for tenant rights, fight for the housing rights of others. Here was this highly educated young man presuming to come into one of America's most troubled cities and try to get into politics. You know, there was one housing project in my city had this drug problem that was awful. And I set up a tent in the middle of the drug dealer's territory. I'm not only gonna live here, but I'm gonna go on a fast. And I'm not gonna eat solid food until we as a community find some way to to uh, do, deal with this problem. I'm, I'm Cory Booker. I'm not sure if you've heard of me, but I'm the city councilman from the Central Ward, but now I'm running for mayor. He wasn't a local guy. He wasn't the guy who was familiar with the kind of politics of City Hall. Happy Easter to you. Sharp James had built up a very formidable political machine in the city to make Booker's run for the mayor very, very difficult. The incumbent mayor was using a lot of his power, a lot of intimidation to hold on to power. Having code enforcement crack down on his political opponents. I'm not going to you all the way down to physical police intimidation. I'm amazed at Mr. Booker's lack of knowledge. Sharp James keeps talking out of both sides of his mouth. Mr. Booker has not told one truth on this program. Sharp James may not have a future as a mayor, but he has one as a fiction writer. He's somebody who brings out strong reactions in people. I think that's partly a result of the way that Sharp James was running against him. That kind of intimidation and machine-style politics was a big hurdle for him. We Hold your head high. We took it to the mat. We fought for our values. 
for our children and for what we believe in. It was a huge blow for him because this was really the first big political setback of his career. He has to grapple with the question of whether he can stick to his values in politics and still be successful, and whether this is the business that he really wants to be a part of. We lost that election by a handful of points. It was, it was a really close fight. When Newarker saw me go right back to work and community organizing, staying there, by the time a year out from the election, we were polling 25 points ahead of any opposition. Of mayor of the city of Newark. Cory Booker became Newark's cheerleader. He was the person who was going to inspire change in Newark, and so on, and draw attention to the city. I've had people regularly take pictures of potholes and tell me about them. Was that you? <laughs> okay. Constituents would tweet at him all of these problems that they were having in the city, and he would tweet back at them, I'm on it. He saved a neighbor from a burning house, rescued an abandoned dog, and helped the city dig out from a snowstorm. We got a, a major uh, a snow plow here stuck. They're urgently needed on streets throughout the city. Booker likes to talk about this on the campaign trail, that he is the only candidate who lives in a low-income minority city. And the fact that it is still a poverty-stricken city, there's still so much crime, these are things that he wasn't able to change. Congratulations, Senator. Thank Welcome to the It's important to understand, for most of the time Cory Booker has been in the Senate, the Democrats have been in the minority. But when the Affordable Care Act came through, so-called Obamacare... And the uh, kinds of issues that Cory Booker has championed are not natural issues for Republicans to want to co-sponsor. However, he did hit on one that fortuitously happened to be not only of interest to Republicans, but also to the son-in-law of President Trump. Our broken criminal justice system is a cancer on the soul of our nation and preys upon our most vulnerable citizens or our most marginalized population. This needs to change all Americans. In a sense, he, he kind of has this Joe Biden approach, which is the Republicans are not the enemy. Uh, there are areas in which it's, it is possible to find common purpose. Corey, at his heart, is a public servant. He has an ability um, to connect with people in need, to bring folks together and to get big controversial things done because he's done that his entire career. I think he identifies this as a moment where that kind of profile is really necessary. This election is not a referendum on one guy in one office. It's a referendum on who we are and who we must be to each other. And I think there are a lot of people who have been disappointed at the kind of the arc of his campaign thus yeah. far. Uh, underwhelming so far. I think people expected him to come out like a rocket and he hasn't yet. The words you hear a lot from Cory Booker on the campaign trail is love. You cannot love your country unless you love your fellow country men and women. And love. Love the love. Love-based politics. His focus is always fighting darkness with light, fighting hate with love. The only way to break hate is not bringing more hate, it's by bringing love and hope. Let us declare again that we are a nation of interdependence and that in America, love always trumps hate. The rap on you is that you're too soft yeah. That you're too soft to be president. You're too nice yeah. to beat Trump. You're too nice to be president. The thing people confuse is they think sometimes to be tough, you got to be mean, to That's be right. strong, you got to be cruel. No. Yeah. In some ways, I think the election that is in street fight is very similar to the election that, that he would have against Donald Trump. In spite of a personality that, that comes across as kind and deeply moral and, and ethical, he also knows what it's like to fight a really dirty election. The platforms that Donald Trump uses to demean and degrade, my history is using these platforms to fight hate with love. People think love is something soft, and it's not soft. Love is confrontation, but it's confrontation on the basis of the issues, not on the I hate you for who you are. Because he knows that that's a losing game for everybody in the long run. We are at a point now in American society that people are losing faith in our ability to do big things anymore. They feel like the forces tearing us apart are stronger than those that are holding us together. I'm running for president of the United States to rekindle, to revive that sense of common purpose to address what I know is a sense of common pain in this country. We need to repair that fabric of our community and we need to get to the business of addressing persistent injustices in America.